Hey, this is Rick from In Front of IT, and welcome to this video. I'll be showing you how to set up two or more virtual machines, or VMs, to talk to each other in what's called a NAT virtual network on VirtualBox. When you're using a home lab with virtual machines, or VMs, on a single physical server, laptop, or desktop, putting your test systems on a NAT network interface is preferred, so they don't interfere with your real network. This way, you can test all kinds of services like DHCP, DNS, domain controllers, containers, websites, without causing problems to other members of your household, your office, or on your network. Now this works great when you have one test system, one at a time, or multiple like these two VMs I have here that don't need to talk to each other, only, but only need to talk to the internet. But what happens when you want these systems to talk to each other, to test all kinds of things like I mentioned before and that you'll see on my channel. This, my friends, is where VirtualBox NAT network comes into play. And in this video, I'll show you how to set it up and how it works. But let's get in front of it. So here we have our two VMs. One is Linux, one is Windows. Okay. And they're both running on my Linux desktop, running VirtualBox. And as you can see here in the settings, they both have an interface pointing to the NAT network. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is their IP address. This one has an IP address of 10.0.2.15. This Windows VM also has an IP address of 10.0.2.15. Okay. Now, the reason they have the same IP address, which would typically be impossible on the same network, is because they're not on the same network. They are both on a NAT network, which is their own enclosed little network just for them to be able to talk through the desktop host, virtual host, out to the internet, whatever they need, the same way the desktop does, hidden within the desktop. So they cannot be spoken to by anything outside of the desktop. Okay. And they cannot speak to each other, which, which is clear because they have the same IP address. And then that becomes the potential problem. If you're working on each of these by themselves, testing something just on this system by itself, or just on this system by itself, that's great. No problems there. But what if you need this system to talk to this system? If I'm running a web server with some kind of website on this system, and I want to take my browser on Windows and test it, hit it over here. How do I do that? And that is where then that network comes into play. Where we go from NAT to the NAT network. And if you would put both of these systems on the same NAT network, they still have the other same properties hidden behind the virtual box host, which is my desktop, able to communicate outside to the internet the same way my desktop can, hit whatever my desktop can. But then you have the added benefit that they can talk to each other. They can see each other. That allows you to test a network of systems within your virtual box host. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. Okay, back in Oracle Virtual Manager, I actually powered the systems off because on the Linux side with Virtual Manager, there's some stability issues when trying to change the network interface from NAT to something else. So it's easier to work in Linux by turning them on. That'll also allow them to get the new IP address that they need without an issue. So they're both powered off. We're going to go into file preferences and then choose network. As you can see here, we have no NAT network set up. 
So we're going to create one by clicking on the add icon. Now, technically it's already done and set up with the defaults we need, but we're going to go in so I can explain some things to you. Clicking on the edit icon. We have the network name, which usually is the only thing I'll really change to give it a more district, uh, descriptive name. We have the network seeder that we're going to leave alone for now, which is the IP network space 10.0.2.0 and seeder or subnet mass, which is slash 24. Then we have the network options. So supports DHCP is checked, which means that the virtual box host will be given out IP addresses to DHCP, which is stands for dynamic host configuration protocol. I'll leave a link below explaining some of these items here. And we also have that we could turn on or off IPv6. IPv6 is the next generation of IP addressing for devices, Internet of Things, the cloud, all those kinds of things. For this, for the scope of this discussion and for your home lab in general, we can leave this off. Port forwarding is what can allow VMs within this NAT network to be communicated with from outside the NAT network or outside the host by exposing ports on the host that will map to ports on the on VMs within the NAT network. For this, where we don't need anything for, for this testing. And I'll probably go into more explanation in detail about this in another video. So we're done here. Now we got to go to our VMs and change them from NAT to NAT network. Highlight the first one, which is our Windows VM. Click on settings. Go down to network. As you can see, it's currently NAT. We are going to change it to NAT network. Since this is the only NAT network we created or have, it automatically defaults to that. Everything else we can leave as the default. Now we'll go to the other Linux VM that we were running and do the same thing. Settings, network, currently on NAT. We're going to change it to NAT network. Pick the same network. That's the key. Make sure they're on the same network if you want them to communicate with each other. Click OK. And then we'll start these up. And I'll show you how they can now talk to each other. OK, so here we are with our two VMs powered on. Put it in and that command prompts. Our Linux VM and our Windows VM, same as before. Only difference now is that they're on the same network. As we can see here in the VirtualBox Manager, NAT network for this Linux VM, NAT network, same name for the Windows VM. So now what we're gonna do is run some of the same tests that we ran previously when they were on the, the NAT interface, but the additional one of showing that they can communicate with each other. So I'll start with the Linux one you an IP address. Now it's a different one. You recall previously it was 10.0.2.15. Now it's 10.0.2.4. Okay. And on our Windows system, it is now 10.0.2.15 still. But here's the difference. Now they have different IPs. So now, they can supposedly communicate with each other. So we'll start off with the Windows one first. In the internet, see that still works. And now we're gonna ping that IP address on the Linux system, 10.0.2.4. And we get a response. Coming to the Linux system, 
we're gonna do same test ping google.com going out to the internet and getting a response just like before and now we're going to ping the ip address of the window system and we get a response and just to prove that this is actually the window system that we're pinging and not some other in VM, I'm going to use a command called NC, which is basically to summarize a, a test that tests a certain port this on a, on a remote VM system or IP address to see if that port is open, commonly used for troubleshooting or communication between um, devices, PCs, VMs, servers, what have you. If you want to test more than just pinging, sometimes you got to test, Hey, is that application running on that ECP port that is supposed to be running on? And so we're going to use this as a definitive test to show that they're communicating. We're going to put the IP address of the Windows system, and we're going to pick a port. Now, all Windows systems by default, listen on port ECP port 445. That is their port that's used for all types of Windows related communication, which is called SMB or SIFS for file sharing or domain communication. Almost anything primarily Windows related, a lot of it happens on that communication port. So that port is always open on a Windows system by default port 445 and we get a response as you can see it shows that what the actual common name is used on the linux side to communicate with the port and shows that it is open which means that it was able to access that port and get a response and that is how we set up systems to communicate with you with each other and we'll be using this in other videos in the channel extensively to do all types of testing, application installs, and other things to get you quite comfortable with working in the Linux ecosystem. And thanks for watching.